Hello everybody, I'm Henry Li at uh, Blue Heron Arts. Um, today we're going to show you again the process of uh, dry mounting um, uh, of a finished, a finished uh, uh, painting demo uh, from uh, yesterday's uh, workshop uh, Victoria did. Uh, in her workshop on how to paint magnolia in um, Gombe or elaborated style with a, uh, a poetic, uh, poetic title, The Color of a Flower as a White Clouds. Um, okay, um, the reason we have to mount either in uh, dry mounting or wet mounting method is to, um, first of all, uh, flatten it, stretch the paper. We don't stretch it during the painting because it will uh, prevent it from uh, working on the, on the back side. Sometimes the white is applied on the back side of the paper. Not in this case, though. Um, so after, after painting, we need to use a backing paper to uh, show the color. And uh, especially uh, with this uh, very uh, subtle background color, you, uh, you won't really see it uh, after, until uh, after mounting. The material we are going to use are uh, mounting uh, surface the, for uh, permanent backing. And then we use uh, silicone as a uh, adhesive. It comes with a, a adhesive, uh, heat activated adhesive. And we need to attach this film on the permanent support. The silicone paper comes with a release paper. Uh, it's not supposed to be used as a permanent support because it's a very um, slippery. It will not stay. Uh, it's called a release paper. Um, so we need a permanent support. You can use any paper as a backing paper. For example, uh, watercolor paper, um, Bristol paper, uh, image drawing paper, or other um, acid-free paper, not newsprint. Um, you can also use a board, a uh, mat, uh, foam board, or, or you know, heavy ones, or uh, museum board, acid-free, um, or any other uh, materials you you like, uh, like a canvas even. Um, we do sell a package now. It comes with a one yard of silicone and one uh, yard of backing paper. The backing paper comes uh, with a, a, a rough side with a, a little teeth. Um, but if you use the shiny side, it's also um, okay. So don't worry if you you know, um, use the, the wrong side, it will still work. Because you can, you can mount multiple layers if you like to have a heavier backing. Um, like uh, if you mount into a scroll, you may need to do more than once. So both sides is usable. And you can get this package for uh, $25 on Amazon or uh, $20 uh, website. I think Amazon is still uh, pending on the, uh, it's in the uh, restock process. It's out of stock right now. So you can go to our website. We have the link in the video description and you can find to, to order. Um, and I have the instruction of uh, two steps, very simple, in the video description you can follow. So the, uh, the tools you use it's uh, uh, basically the cutting tools, like uh, we, we use a roller blader because uh, this is the 
the best to cut the silicon paper uh, without carrying uh, the the film. It's very kind of uh, difficult if you cut with the exacto knife. And uh, the backing paper uh, is cut exactly the same or a little bit smaller even than the original painting. I don't trim the original painting, uh, so I cut it exactly, and we'll, we can trim it later because we don't know the mat or the, f the uh, frame w in a window yet. So you can leave that for the framer to do. Um, so these three pieces are the same. The silicone paper uh, is the same or a little bit exactly the same, a little bit uh, larger, in this case, <laughs> just a tear larger, I think. I prefer it smaller because it will not stick on the, the padding. Speak of uh, uh, the padding, uh, we use four layers of cloth. Uh, it, this is denim, denim cloth, four layers. I used this for many, uh, many years. It's the same cloth I use. I've been using because this surface is easier uh, to clean. You can just rub it off if any silicone uh, adhesive uh, stick on this, you can just rub it off. If you use felt, you have will have a hard time to remove it. Okay, uh, so not too heavy, not too thin, four layers. If if you if you can use pillow uh, case or sheeting that kind of um, fine cotton, um, if you don't have denim, or you can buy this in the fabric store. If you um, use it uh, uh, more, you know, often. Um, the other things is the iron, it's the heat except uh, heat heat uh, activated. To, uh, Heat sensitive, heat sensitive uh, silicone. So there's you know some silicone is press sensitive I think. Uh, then this requires heat. So I will set it to silk because uh, uh, the manufacturer setting uh, for this activated silicone is uh, 180 Fahrenheit. I I will measure it. Uh, what's the setting on this? But uh, I think I, I always use silk or, or wool. The, the lowest is synthetic and silk, the wool. So I use some, somewhere between silk and wool. If there is no between, in between, I use silk to start with. If not enough, you can go to wool, W-O-O-L. I have difficulty to pronounce the, this word. Um, OK, wool or wool <laughs> or uh, silk. Uh, you need to practice before uh, doing your important work because everybody's uh, iron is different. Okay, um, so this, the the first step I already com completed is to cut the paper and the silicone. Now I'm going to attach this two uh, with the iron. So put. A little bit uh, padding. We have four layers of a denim cloth. This is what it is. Okay. And then I put uh, backing paper, the rough side, the side with piece facing up. Okay. And then the silicone facing, silicone film facing the rough side of the backing, okay? And then, let me just raise the camera a little bit so I can... show the full... If there are any questions, uh, you can... Uh, this is live, so I can address if any questions. Okay, <coughs> so this two, as you can imagine, if the silicone paper is larger, it will stick on the cloth, on the pad. If it's uh, 
smaller is okay or same time if it's too small there is another problem so you, you can have the backing paper slightly larger than the silicone that's the solution um, okay I think that that would be a wise, wise um, way to do it wiser way just have a larger backing than the silicone then you don't have to worry about uh, the ex uh, excessive uh, um, silicone sticking on the on the pad okay so at this point you just go straight from center out to the sides the silicone may you know sometimes come with a little bit wrinkle or loose uh, film it's okay you know it's just uh, a temporary um, I mean you just a transfer kind of transfer uh, it's called a silicone release paper this is this uh, white piece on top okay now it's very important to save this piece okay um, it's good that you can see the problem so uh, when you do it you may you know avoid this so now it's sticking on the on the uh, padding because uh, I have the silicone a little bit too large so you need to remove this after it cool down a little bit just rub it off with your fingertip very easy and just just away from the area you're working on um, although it's not a big deal it, it will probably if you turn the painting back side you know the facing this uh, it, it will uh, stick on your painting so you better remove extra silicone that's the, from the extra edge that we have like this okay <coughs> and now we, we remember uh, uh, I think you, you will not be confused but sometimes you may so make sure you 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 uh, you mount the painting on the because uh, uh, when you try to separate re release this uh, it's easier to remove the this the very easy to remove this uh, release paper uh, so the it will leave this film on top of the the backing paper so now you save this um, as a covering sheet to cover to protect the original when you proceed to this second step okay now I put the painting facing up uh, on top of the silicone imagine the silicone is like uh, the paste we don't use paste in this dry mounting process so there's no waiting there's you know it's very convenient it's permanent I mean it's uh, yeah it is permanent so you cannot if you make uh, if you do anything wrong you cannot uh, redo it and do it um, it's archival because the silicone has been used in um, mounting photography in the photo industry for many many years many decades um, it's proven to be archival and acid free M more stable than wheat paste or uh, other uh, wet uh, paste I think okay so I'm going to uh, cover the painting with this uh, silicone release paper that I just uh, peeled off from the silicone okay so I'm going to iron it so just make sure the the painting is uh, inside the so everything is aligned okay because we, we do have some extra mark you know we, we need to cut off like if the painting is uh, made stuff here but when we paint we we don't have to worry about uh, this extra we, we do need to like uh, some extra uh, paper when you paint right so 
if it's a little bit offline, uh, off, y it doesn't matter, you will stream it. Okay, you ready? <coughs> um, before I do that, I have one more note. If the painting has wrinkles, like it was folded, like a large painting, we, we usually don't do large painting, but uh, this could be folded in an envelope and sent to somebody before mounting, right? So it comes with spoil. Uh, if you have wrinkles of, or uh, creases, you can flatten that with a little bit uh, moisture, not too much, to, to the extent to uh, melt the, the paints. And, and then uh, flatten it with uh, iron, uh, low temperature iron, just to flatten that first. So at this point, it's perfectly flat. Uh, we don't, I don't see any uh, serious uh, uh, creases or, or wrinkles here. And the, the original work is very thin. That's a good thing. So um, and I think the thickness doesn't really matter. It's the condition of that. Sometimes uh, if you have thick paints, um, it might create uh, some unevenness when, when uh, uh, of the paper, you know, it kind of shrink somewhere. And you need to relax the painting with a little moisture. Uh, just like you iron a shirt, you know, usually I do that with a larger painting. With a small size painting like this, I don't really need any moisture. So I just go, uh, it also depends on the, the uh, climate. Uh, it, right now we have a higher humidity. It's, uh, um, it was rained uh, yesterday, I think, or the day before yesterday. So we have pretty wet uh, air here. So we, I don't need to worry. If it's very dry, I would spray a little bit moisture uh, on the front side or, or back side, either way, of the painting. OK, I'm going to start from the center, OK, and then go out in R four directions or eight directions from center out. So you dry the air out from center. Sorry, I, I touched the camera, so it's shaking. Make you dizzy, <laughs> sorry. Okay, um, how long it will be? It depends on the temperature and the, the speed and the size of the painting. Uh, if it's a large size, it, it takes hours to finish. The, for each spot, it requires about a minute, um, maybe 30 seconds. Depends on the, the, uh, um, the, the iron temperature, the speed, the size of the painting. So don't... Uh, you can check to see if they stick together or, or not. If not, if you see uh, wrinkles, you can keep iron until they are flat. You, know, you can see why uh, I, I use a, 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 a top, uh, you know, protecting sheets because this may stick on the iron. If you have extra silicone exposed, uh, it will stick on the iron. So this piece is very important. It's equals to the silicone, you know. So it will protect the iron from the... If you have this uh, stick on the iron, you need to clean it with a paper towel. I usually don't uh, iron both sides because uh, people really don't see that, right? As, uh, as long as the front is okay. I, I will be fine. If you're a perfectionist, you may iron on this back side. What you do is you put the painting uh, with the sheet back in the silicone release paper, uh, uh, protecting it on the, on the other side. Because this is on the back, I don't have to use another, sh and I can check the iron if it's, there's no sticky, you know, dirt, you know, something like that. I can just go like this, but. Uh, you don't have to. This really an uh, option because uh, sometimes you make this side flat, but uh, the wrinkles, uh, the little little waves thing goes on onto the front. So you don't want to have that. Just keep eye on the front. It will be fine. 
because it, uh, they, they might be a little bit uneven as that's okay. As, as long as this front is uh, flat. Um, yeah, you, now you can see the, the color much better. So it, it's usually um, recovers the uh, faded color you know, after drying. When you paint it, uh, it looks like this. After it dry, it fade off. And when after mounting, the color will be enhanced and bring back to the original um, saturation or intensity uh, as it was wet. So that's why we need to have this finishing touch to complete the process. In, you know, this just simple uh, to um, recap the process. The two steps: one is to mount the silicone paper uh, on the backing first and release this sheet and put the painting on top and put this back. Uh, it, it do have uh, the shiny side. I think the shiny side, it's, if you remember, you know, it's okay. Uh, it's the, the shiny side uh, facing the, the silicone is more uh, anti-sticking. So if it stick on this, it's easier to release. If you use the back side, there might be a little bit difference. Uh, the, 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 the front, you know, the, this one it was originally, uh, this is very shiny. If you use a, a pen, a ink pen, you cannot even write on this because it's waterproof. That's good. So you will not uh, stick on anything. That's the perfect uh, paper. So when you get this uh, uh, package from uh, our website, you got, uh, silicone paper with the release paper. So you got uh, this cover sheet comes with that. Uh, plus the plain, plain backing paper. So, um, and you can use, if you have your own backing, you don't have to buy this. You can just use anything you prefer. Uh, you can also use white uh, rice paper <laughs> as backing, but uh, it's maybe a little bit uh, too soft, so the backing pa paper should be a little bit uh, stronger than the to kind of hold it, so it, it's not too soft. You can still roll it, so it's very thin, so you can still roll it. That's what I like, because if you use like a, a 140 pound um, paper, you may not, you, uh, you cannot roll it into a small tube, uh, you know, to send it when someone collect it. So um, that's why we, we prefer, uh, this is 40, I think it's about 44 or something like, 44 pounds. Uh, you can double it. You can put uh, another uh, backing paper, not this release paper, but uh, you, can, you can put another piece uh, with this, uh, just repeat the process, put the silicone on this one, and then this. Uh, not this uh, release paper, you can use another piece of plain backing paper with the teeth. Not this one too shiny, it will not uh, be permanent, it can you know, lose. Okay, any questions? Let me see. Never done dry mounting before. Okay, I wish uh, this video inspired you to try this. This is really make, your, um, make it our life easier. So <coughs> it's more um, convenient uh, than traditional method. There's no uh, risk. It's risk-free because there's no water, so no bleeding. You can use Western color. You can use Western watercolor. If you use watercolor to paint uh, on rice paper, you can now because we don't wet it. Uh, if you wet mount, those color, uh, when, when they re wet, they will bleed. That's the big problem with wet mounting. But with dry mounting, it's so easy, right? Any other questions? No? Okay, um, the link to order this uh, uh, combo with a one sheet of uh, silicone paper um, and one sheet of uh, backing paper uh, is available uh, soon on Amazon. I hope uh, 
in a uh, few days you will be there. We already mailed a few days ago uh, restocking. And uh, you can get this now right from uh, our website following the link in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and uh, until next time, happy painting and happy mounting. Bye-bye.